Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Antique Automotive Acres. I'm Rusty Bird coming to you from somewhere here in Southeast Michigan. Bit of a different view. I'm not standing in front of a car today, but we are working on a car project. Um, we are uh, back again to working on uh, my 1914 Studebaker SC4, whom I like to call Eleanor. And uh, we've gotten to the point where I have to make new bushings for the water pump, hence standing in front of my equally vintage lathe. This is my 1911 Hendy lathe. Uh, so vintage machine making parts for another vintage machine. I kind of like that from a historical perspective. Maybe we'll get into a little bit more of the details of that. Um, if you haven't uh, caught up, there are some previous videos where I go over uh, the history of Studebaker, the company, an overview of the car, Eleanor herself. You even get to hear her run. I didn't string it out like I did the Rio video where I kept, you know, making sure people came back to watch more. So, uh, today we're into actually doing some of the machining work on making the bushings, um, and we'll get into a little bit more details of, uh, how things have progressed since the last video. So uh, with that, uh, once again, if you're not caught up, please maybe go ahead and take a, a chance to go get caught up on the, uh, the previous video where you see me extract the water pump and also get an overview of the car itself. Other than that, why don't we go ahead and get things started. So like I mentioned in the last video, you saw me extract the water pump uh, in a little bit of stop motion action, the wonder of this modern technology in these cameras. Um, and you can, I did crack the, uh, the the pump apart and show you the insides, but again, we're working on rebushing this side of the pump. Um, off camera, because I'm on a bit of a deadline, I did get the old bushing extracted. It looks kind of something like this. Not that complicated a piece to make, uh, standard bronze material, very common from back in the day. Was a bit of a devil to get out of here though, I did have to uh, apply a little bit of uh, the heat wrench, also known as a torch, and uh, some heavy duty pressure from a hydraulic uh, press. But normally it would slide into the assembly like this, uh, and it is a press fit, that's why it's so tight. Um, and then the shaft of the pump, which I've shown this before, rubber vein pump from uh, Evan Johnson Demerud boat motor, works fabulously, um, would ride here on this bushing. And what the problem is, and it's kind of hard to convey it on camera, is there is just a lot of slop. I can move and wiggle that around. That's plenty of room for water to get out. That's why this was leaking so badly. Um, I've actually got it on backwards, but the point's the same. It, it's why it's been leaking. So um, it's time to make a new one. I happen to have some raw materials uh, available that I can use to make this. And uh, off camera, I've already started and I'll put some picture out, uh, pictures up, give you an overview of where we're at, maybe go briefly into the machine I'll be using today because it is uh, it, it is another vintage piece of machinery um, and then probably start doing some videos uh, where I get into actually machining this bushing out. Uh, a disclaimer for everybody who's watching, I am not a professional machinist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I have no formal machinist training. I'm an engineer by trade, so I know all the processes and uh, how things are, you know, how things work. But uh, at the same time, I, this is not my uh, my day job. <laughs> so some of you, if anybody is a professional machinist and watching, your your hair might stand on end as I'm doing this work. But uh, just remember, I'm a hobbyist kind of guy. I'm working with what I've got here. So um, in the end seems to be successful so far on other machining projects I've done, but just uh, to insert that disclaimer here. So uh, let me go ahead and um, maybe deploy the camera and give an overview of where we're at and what the next steps are going to be. 
Okay then, so I deployed the handheld again just to kind of show a little bit more of an up close and personal view of what we're trying to do today, uh, or what I'm working on right now, which is, this is that brass bushing, or bronze bushing I showed that was uh, originally pressed into this stamped steel housing that the water pump shaft here would ride on. And one of the functions of this bushing, it's twofold, is of course to carry the shaft, uh, but it's also long enough to help seal off water from escaping. And then at the end, although it got damaged in the process of uh, being removed, there's a chamfer at the end of this where uh, graphite packing kind of goes in. You can see it carries in, if I pan you down, nope, the wrong way, sorry. You can kind of see that a pan, there's a little bit of the chamfer that carries into this. That's where the graphite packing goes in, and then the nut tightens down to seal around the shaft here and prevent it from uh, dribbling water out. So, uh, off camera, I did end up go ahead and uh, going go aheading. That does, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I did go ahead and actually get started. I have here a piece of uh, what is known as C954 or aluminum bronze. It's a little bit harder metal uh, than what was probably originally used, which would have been just a, a type of yellow bronze, but this is a really good bushing material. And uh, what you can see here is I have or I have a hunk of this uh, already. It's a little bit big in diameter, unfortunately, but um, you know, it's what I have on hand. So I did end up cutting a chunk of it off using my bandsaw and then um, come in and face it off so that the face of it is flush and uh, put a center in it because I'm gonna be doing a fair amount of turning this down to diameter. Uh, and speaking of turning, as I hand back a bit, try not to trip over things as I walk backwards into my camera stand. You can see here, this is the machine I'm doing this on. It's my 1911 Hendy lathe. And um, it's a little bit worn. It's definitely showing its age, but it still runs relatively true. Um, and, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's good enough to meet my needs. It's a 16-inch swing lathe, so it's actually surprisingly large, even though it's a relatively short distance between tailstock and headstock. So it's a what uh, it's a 16 by 6 uh, in Hendy nomenclature. And for those who don't recognize Hendy, um, again, it's I've got this thing for oddball nameplates. Uh, <laughs> I've said that before. Hendy was a company uh, in Connecticut, and what they held the patent on is this here, this very unique W.P. Norton was the inventor of this. Uh, they call it the W.P. Norton's patent. Um, and he held the patent on the quick change gearbox. So when it comes to threading, you can easily select different thread rates and feed rates on this lathe um, to set up your threading, which is something that was specific to Hendy lathes, whereas other lathes that might be more recognizable, like South Bend lathes, would use just change gears. You would literally have to take gears off and put new gears on. Back here is what I'm talking about. These, these, are, uh, the, these are the gear drive for the gearbox that then will move the carriage in time to rotation of the spindle. Uh, so anyway, it's, it was a unique piece of machinery. The next stop for it was going to be a junkyard. So I came in and, uh, have been putting it back to use again. Um, kind of a unique thing about this was, is in, in researching the history of the lathe a bit, I did find out that it was owned by the Dodge brothers in Detroit. Uh, they, they purchased it. In 1911, I think as part of their expansion into what was formed, you know, what used to be called Dodge, Maine, uh, in Hamtramck. Uh, it's a plant that no longer exists, unfortunately, but I, sus I surmise, I guess, that they bought this lathe as part of their upfit for the new building they were moving into. Uh, I did not buy it from Dodge, Maine. Uh, that got knocked down in the late 1980s. Uh, I bought this from somebody, but based on serial number and data records and physical characteristics of the lathe, I was able to uh, work with some of the vintage machinist uh, historians um, and find out that, yes, it was owned by the Dodge Brothers, who at the time were in the business of making parts for various car companies, including Studebaker. So... 
theoretically, that lathe made parts for that car. There are Dodge Brothers branded parts on this car. Um, so it's kind of a unique little full circle story that possibly I am using the same lathe that made parts for the same car just 108 years later. Um, so with that in the overview, the next step is that I need to get in here and uh, reset up the piece and the chuck, uh, put it on the live center, and start turning this down to diameter. So in a bit of uh, oddity and mistake with technology, I unfortunately figured out after the fact that I had lost the audio for this particular video clip. Not sure how the technology ate the audio, uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of me back talking about what I'm describing in the video because there is no sound, hence the, uh, the disconnect with what I'm saying and what you're seeing on screen. Uh, the summary of what I was trying to describe here is, is that I had a change of mind in how I was going to do the order of uh, machining operations. I originally said I was going to move the part in the chuck and set up for turning the outside diameter. Instead, what we're going to move into is actually drilling and ter uh, boring the internal uh, bore of the bushing itself. Uh, because in the long run, then I can use that bore as a reference uh, when it comes time to do the outside diameter, making sure the part is uh, as concentric as can be uh, for what I can turn out on uh, this uh, 111-year-old lathe that's fairly worn. Uh, so apologies for the audio confusion, but uh, we're going to move into drilling and boring. So as I look at the camera, I think you can kind of see the part and what's going on. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can just jigger the angle just a hair. Um, it's a new experience filming machining uh, and making sure I can get in there to operate the machine and also uh, make sure that there's something entertaining for folks to watch. So I've drilled up to about a half inch hole. My final target is going to be a running fit on three quarter inch shaft, which is I have to double check the machinery's handbook uh, uh, in indispensable tome of information when it comes to machining like this. Um, but you don't want to drill up to your size. Drills sometimes don't leave necessarily a round hole or the right surface finish for what you're looking for. So you typically drill up as large as you can because it's the best way to remo remove material. And then you go in and do either uh, a reamer, or in my case, I'll probably have to break out a boring bar because I don't have the right size reamer for what I'm looking for. So uh, that's where you start getting into these weird fractional size uh, drill bits. So uh, just so I can show you, this is a 47 64th. It's a little bit old and beaten up, much like uh, the lathe itself, but it's still usable. And if I look at my handy dandy conversion chart, 47 64th works out to uh, 734 thousandths. Three quarters of an inch is 750. Um, and uh, for those who are metrically minded, I apologize. This shop is so old, the only thing we work in is freedom units. That's just how I was trained and honestly how I think. So uh, getting into uh, fractional sizes, you know, it's handy to have a decimal chart on hand. But uh, we're going for a running fit on three quarters of an inch shaft, which should be right around eh, 751 or 52, maybe even 753. So we'll, uh, we'll drill this out. Uh, I'll do it real time so you get an idea of what uh, this joyous sounds are of uh, machining uh, bearing bronze. And then um, uh, we'll set up for boring the hole out. Okay, that's tight. We're going to bring that in. The one thing that I do uh, use when I'm machining this kind of bronze is, is it likes to fling chips just everywhere. So I do put this handy little just plastic screen around things to try and keep the chips from shooting right back at my face. So let me go ahead and turn the lathe on. And uh, a little bit of cutting oil never hurt nothing. And let's get at it.
bring it back and clear some of these chips out. And back again. plumb full of chips again. You can hear it start to load up. I was probably a little bit too far in, but since we still have to bore, it'll still work out. Come on. There it is. We're pretty close to the end. There we go. Through and through. Well, folks, I'm standing in a garage bay with Eleanor, not out in the shop with, in a different bow tie and a shirt of a different color, which means I've done it again. I recorded too much footage for one YouTube video. Seemed like a good spot to stop after finishing out the drilling operation, uh, drilling that hole out in the bushing up to uh, 734 thousandths of an inch or 47 sixty fourths of an inch. Uh, so in the next video, you'll see uh, the final operations of putting, uh, getting that bushing finally machined and then getting it installed into the water pump. Uh, a spoiler, as you can see, Eleanor is out of the shop. Uh, it worked out fabulously. It's working quite well. Um, in the meantime, uh, if you like the video, maybe go ahead and hit the like on icon. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the chat window down below. I do make an, uh, an effort to answer all comments and, uh, and try to answer questions that come my way. Uh, if you got any feedback on how the videos are going, feel free to let me know. I can always use, uh, always use both positive and negative feedback. Um, uh, and also, uh, if you're new to the channel, maybe go ahead and give it a subscription. Go ahead and hit that little bell icon. It does something uh, with the YouTube black magic analytical side of things. Uh, at least I think at its basic function, it lets you know when uh, a new video is posted. Uh, in the meantime, between videos, I am on social media at RustyJazz1938 or at Antique Automotive Acres. Uh, and also, uh, fun, exciting news with uh, special thanks to my good friend Hillary. Uh, now, if you go to www.AntiqueAutomotiveAcres.com, that's an easy way to find my YouTube channel. So. Uh, with that, make sure I got this all. Uh, the like, the comment, the subscribe, hit the bell icon, Black Magic YouTube's, Instagram, social media postings, www.antiqueautomotiveacres.com. Yep, hit all those points. Um, I think that's it. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for uh, for the video. Thank you very much for watching.